What's up my fellow One Piece fans, it's your boy King back at it again with more One Piece content. Now today is an awesome day to be part of the One Piece fandom, but then again, when isn't it great to be a fan of this amazing story? Now I started reading this series two years ago and I have absolutely no regrets about it. And this time around, Oda has really outdone himself. Now let's talk about Shanks, because he is definitely the man. Now some people might hate on him because of all the hype from his fans, but he's living up to those expectations. However, there are a few few questions that come with the latest chapter release that I want to address. I'll answer two out of the three questions raised. The first question is pretty obvious. If Shanks is so powerful, why didn't he conquer the sea sooner? Why now? The second question is who is on the ship that's approaching Egghead Island and what does it mean? Finally, the big question on everyone's mind, will there be a war between the Straw Hats and the world government? But hey, if you're an anime watcher only and haven't read the latest chapter of the manga, be warned spoilers ahead. So make sure to catch up before joining in on the discussion. Now the latest One Piece chapter 1079 begins with a flashback centered on Vegapunk York, who realizes that the world government plans to betray her and eliminate her. However, York has her own plan and she orders all the Seraphim to kill everyone except herself, Stella and the Cypherpore agents captured in the underground lab. She then orders a snake to turn her into stone and revert it later, along with another order that is not revealed to readers. And of course we get a glimpse of a ship that has the Blackbeard Pirates Jolly Roger. Later on, the focus shifts to Elbuff where Shanks and the Eustace Kids battle has begun. Kid fights various captains from the Red Hair Pirates fleet and defeats them with the damned punk attack. However, this is just Shanks future sight and in reality Shanks defeats Kid and his crew with the massive Kamusari attack. For those of you who might not know what Kamusari means, it directly translates to divine departure. The same move used by former pirate king Go D. Roger against Kozuki Oden. Kid and his crew are left unconscious and Shanks takes all the Rod Poneglyph writings before leaving. Dory and Brogi, I, I remember last time I actually mispronounced uh, Dory by saying something like doggy that, well that's an that, that's an embarrassing time and I, re I really don't want to talk about it so the giants from little garden are back and they also appear and lecture kids crew on the consequences of attacking others homelands before using the hakoku sovereignty to destroy the victoria punk so things are looking pretty bleak for the kid pirates right about now like what was kid even thinking going up against shanks that was a one-way ticket to the afterlife if you ask me and honestly speaking i have no remorse for for kid he is just plain 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 dumb plain stupid but anyways maybe he might might and this is a huge might he might join red hair's crew something along those lines maybe maybe shanks might have a change of heart and just decide to take him under his wing because i i highly doubt that he will let him drown although to be honest shanks has been acting weird lately you know what i mean but i can't help but feel bad for killer though because he warned kid about everything but he just wouldn't listen and now their ship is in shambles which is basically the nail in the coffin for this crew. It's kinda like that time at Marineford when the Moby Dick got wrecked and that signaled the end of the Whitebeard crew. But I gotta say this is pretty anticlimactic. We all thought Kid was gonna be the Edward to Luffy's Roger but then Oda just switched things up and made him the Shiki. Or if you wanna be disrespectful he turned him into Gekko Moria. And really what's up with that? And how is all this gonna play out in the end game? I heard rumors that the fight for the One Piece is gonna be like a battle royale but if all the big players are getting taken out so early, who's even gonna be left to fight for it? Big Mom is gone, Kaido is gone, and Law fell against Teach. So what's happening here, Oda? I don't understand. Anyway, let's pour one out for the Kid Pirates because it looks like they're done for and maybe let's all take a lesson from this and not underestimate Shanks. But I gotta say something about Shanks. That man is insane. He can pull off some crazy moves with his super advanced attack and his observation hockey is off the charts. Like he can literally see into the future, which is some next level stuff. So why hasn't he gone after the One Piece and become the King of Pirates? Well, the answer is pretty simple. He just doesn't care about it and before you click off the video remember that during chapter 1078 and 1079 Oda has been dropping these hints. Well that and something else. Let me break it down for you. Shanks has his own fleet but it's actually the weakest out of all the Yonkos. That means he and his crew do most of the heavy lifting while everyone else just gets protection from him. But here's the thing. Shanks is all about his comrades. He's got the same kind of loyalty and protectiveness that Roger had. I mean, if you look at how he reacted when Kid tried to take out his fleet, it's clear that Shanks would do anything to protect his friends. So maybe if Kid hadn't made that move, Shanks would have let him off the hook. But the point is, Shanks is more interested in going on adventures with his friends and paving the way for Luffy than he is in being the king of pirates. It's just not his thing. 
Now, after all this, I was thinking about Sheng and his meeting with the Gorsi, and it got me thinking about his true motives because to be honest, I don't trust him. And I know, I just I just justified his actions a while back, but listen to me. You, you know what? That was, that, was, that was like, what, a second or two seconds ago? So don't hold me to that, okay? Now, I'm going off topic here, but the more we learn about him, the more we realize that he might have some connection to Zebek. And that makes me wonder about Roger's relationship with Zebek. Like, did they have a similar rivalry to how Roger and Garp were? But hey, that's a topic for another time, so subscribe to my channel and you might end up actually watching that video. Anyway, Shang seems to always be in the right place at the right time and his actions don't seem to be random. He's got some beef with Blackbeard and he thought Blackbeard was going to show up at one or two, either claim a devil fruit or an ancient weapon. And now we know that Blackbeard is a bigger threat than we originally thought. So what's Shanks up to? What's his endgame? Well, I think it's pretty clear that he's trying to prevent something bad from happening. Maybe he's trying to prevent Blackbeard from getting his hands on something that could cause some serious damage. Or maybe he's after something else, like fulfilling a promise he made to a special someone. It seems like Shanks has got some serious motivation that goes beyond just being a regular pirate. And dare I say, even becoming the pirate king. Maybe that's not even part of what he's trying to accomplish. And that is actually very possible. He's playing a bigger game and whatever his end goal is, it could have some serious consequences for the whole world. Alright, time for topic number two. There's a ship that's approaching Eged Island, and my best guess is that Kuzan's the one who's on that ship. He's probably come to get Vegapunk to decode the poneglyphs that Teach has got his hands on because Pudding can't do it despite being a member of the Three Eye Tribe that are said to have the voice of all things. But the problem is she's a halfling, meaning she doesn't possess those abilities. And we all know York's the punk he'll most likely take with him, since the world government's gone and betrayed her. Last time we saw Kuzan, he was with Van Oga on Hokek Island after they'd kidnapped Pudding, but since then we've seen Oga fighting against Law and the Hard Pirates alongside Teach, so it totally makes sense that Kuzan would be here now. And honestly, this is perfect timing. I mean, Kuzan's a stand-up guy. I know I'm hoping for too much here, but I I'm very sure he'll be more than happy to lend a hand to the man who saved Saul's life. Now, I gotta give props to Oda. He's been keeping things consistent. It's hilarious how no matter where they end up, all three of those rookies always seem to find trouble. We're definitely in the endgame now. Now, this chapter is full of action and surprises, with readers getting a glimpse into Vegapunk York's plan and Shanks' incredible power. The use of advanced observation hockey by Shanks adds to the intrigue and excitement of the series leaving readers wondering what other surprises the future holds. Additionally, the return of Dory and Brogy, characters from the Little Garden arc, provides a nice sense of nostalgia and continuity to the series. Overall, this chapter sets the stage for more exciting events to come in the world of One Piece. And please leave a comment below if you'd like to see me actually answer the final question, because that is the most important one, as it will give us an insight into how fast Oda wants this entire thing to wrap up.